Greetings, I'm Naeem Sharif from Community Issues Group, welcoming you to a fantastic talk by Imam W.D. Muhammad, son of Elijah Muhammad. Please enjoy the presentation. The title of my talk on the show was Myths, the Burden on America. That was the title of my talk, Myths, the Burden on America. Now, I hope you'll understand where I was coming from as I go on with this address. Uh, <clears throat> when we identify with Adam, we should understand that Adam is to have us identify with Mother Earth, with Mother Earth, with the ground, with the land. He created the man from the earth. Now, if I would just tell you that all that was said there mean that he made the first man an industrialist. Would you believe me? Your father, your first father was an industrialist. That's what that means. That story is to tell you your first father was an industrialist and he was made by God. He had the human nature and the spirit that God wanted in him. And he was an industrialist. If you read the Bible, Genesis, you will see that all of the builders, all of the metal workers came from Adam. It doesn't say he made Adam and then say this one preached the word of God and had the Holy Ghost. No, he made Adam and then industry comes. Metal workers, industry. The farmers, it all. They come behind Adam. So Adam is not the story of the Holy Ghost. Adam is the story of natural man interested in the environment that God put him in and having a spirit to develop that environment. God created all of us to have a spirit to develop our environment. Where there is land unoccupied, like Adam, he was the first one to occupy the land, or whether it's a city that needs our help. God has created us to engage our environment and make it more beautiful and make it more productive. If this is a message from God, then this is a message that awakens my intelligence, it awakens my creativity, it awakens my spirit, to achieve wonders in this universe. And those who have achieved wonders in this universe, they have followed the true tradition of our first father, Adam. Those who built cities, made roads, connected continents, put a higher form of transportation in the air. These are the ones that have followed the tradition of Adam. Now, Adam is not our only father. Am I taking the myth of this a little bit for you? I hope I am. You're trying to separate myth from religion. You know, the Holy Ghost is good and bad. It is. It's bad for those who think they got God's spirit, but they're behaving as though they got the Holy Ghost. Go for it. So those who have that kind of Holy Ghost, it's bad. I think Paul addresses that in the Bible. He said, those who speak in tongues, they can only understand. It. Well, I want to tell Paul, not even them, not even they understand. It. He said, but what we need is edi ed to edify, to put common sense together, Put reason on reason, logic upon logic. So that's what we need to do. Give some construction to the thing. That's what Paul said. I'm elaborating on it, but that's what Paul said. All right. <clears throat> now, there was a great man, a great man, mysterious, but when you get to know him, he's not mysterious at all. And I'm talking about the man that took my father off the streets of this city, lost 
at doing the depression, not having any faith in the future. He never was a churchgoer. His father was a Baptist preacher, Willie Poole, who later wore the name Wali Muhammad, my grandfather, that I loved so much when he died, I wanted to die with it. Yes, he was the first man to father me. My father was away in serving five-year prison term, but my grandfather, he had my grandfather and, and my grandmother come and live with us while he was away. So the first father I knew in my house was my grandfather. I didn't know my father until I was about 13, almost 14 years old, before I knew my father inside the house. But he was in there. And I was obeying him. Because if I didn't, my mother would kill me. Yeah, she took, she took care of whatever her husband couldn't take care of. She took care of it in that house. That's right. My, my, grand, my mother, Clara, Clara Muhammad, Clara Evans Muhammad, both from Georgia, father and mother. Well, anyway, the mysterious man, Mr. W.D. Farad, he's called, called uh, uh, Farad Muhammad, and Wali Farad, he called by different names. But the more common name for him in, in the writings that we have and also in the teachings we have is W.D. Farad. Uh, and you'll find W.D. Farad in the dictionary, in the encyclopedia, you'll find it W.D. Farad. So Mr. W.D. Farad was a very wise man, and he knew that if he was going to change the uneducated African Americans, see, the educated African American uh, has a different attitude. Once he's educated, he's got a different attitude. Uh, Mr. Farad didn't want any of them. He said, Du Bois tried to get them and, and uh, we bring changes for, for blacks with them. That I'm going I'm to try, I'm going to do something different. He said, I'm going after those who are uneducated. So he came to the slums of Detroit and he gathered around him a good number of poor people, not only poor in their pockets, but poor in education and culture. And uh, he knew that they hadn't been given English 102 or higher English. They hadn't studied literature to learn how to translate fiction or translate allegory or allegorical language. They couldn't read Gulliver's story and translate it. You know, he knew that. So he's dealing with people, <clears throat> he's dealing with people who are uneducated, but they're under the rule of darkness. Because if you, Margaret Mead, I think it was, she said only the educated are free. Now, I would have to add to that, only when the educated are freed from myth. They can be educated, but if they're still not freed from myth, they're not free. You're only free when you're freed from myth. I'm not going to tell you, name, spell out the, the myth that you are under. I'll leave that for you to do. But most people are under myth, the rule of myth. They're under the rule of myth. They're controlled by myth in their life, not by reality. And, uh, <clears throat> Satan, and Satan loves that. The shaitan, the, the enemy of God, the enemy of mankind. He loves that you be under myth and not under reality. God wants us under reality and under him who created the reality that we identify as reality. He created all of that. And we want, uh, he wants, and we want all of us to be under the authority of God. But if the authority of God is confused and we are made to see God as some myth, We'll be deprived of God as the, as the rule in our life. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Farad was an Asian, and uh, we were told he was from the Far East. But again, you know, Mecca is not Far East. So we were told he's from the Near East, or from the Middle East, pardon me. The Middle East, too. 
But we have concluded that he was from the Far East. He was from Asia. He did something that made possible my freedom. My four parents were freed by the emancipation of our people, freed from physical enslavement. You can take a free man and put him in chain, limit his physical movement, he will not be a slave necessarily, even though you're making him do everything. He'll still be a free man, though you have him chained, although you have him in prison, although you have his, uh, uh, his movement, his physical movements restricted. He will still be a free man in a body that you have enslaved. You won't be able to enslave his spirit. You won't be able to enslave his mind. He'll be a free man, though you, he'll be your captive your prisoner. The wiser ones who wanted to use us and not see us enjoy this country as free people with them, and they were many, not limited to the South, Northeast, Midwest, everywhere. They were many. They didn't have to worry about us being physically free as long as we were mentally enslaved. So Mr. Farrar was a very wise man. He said, I'm going to work a strategy that will free them and they will no longer be mentally enslaved. So he said he come to resurrect using his words to resurrect, give life again to death. He come to resurrect the mentally dead. Using his exact language. He said he come to resurrect the mentally dead. I believe God was with him. I don't think a man could do this all by himself. I have been created from my father and mother's flesh. I have been created, and I don't think a, a, a man could do that without the help of God. No. So anyway, <clears throat> he told my father that you shouldn't believe in the Bible, shouldn't believe in Christianity. He said, that's to enslave you. That, is, that was given you to you to enslave you. I'm not knocking the church or Christianity. But I have to recognize what worked in this formula that was used by this man to make a new people of the honorable Elijah Muhammad and those who would follow him. I have to recognize that. Okay. Because <clears throat> I know that some Christians, I met some Christians, some one, very wonderful Christians, very wise Christians, and they know how to separate stories and fiction from truth. <laughs> All Christians are not living in the dark. <laughs> so I know that, you know. Um, <clears throat> and as long as we have a live people in heaven watching over us, we can't fare too bad on earth. <laughs> but but what 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 about what what about those who get separated from even their health coming from the live people up there? <laughs> like most of us have done. Most of us, even the preachers, and I hope I know some of you are here today. Some of you are here wearing Muslim names. Some of you Christian preachers. <laughs> I know you very well. You're here today. You're here every time I speak. 
Every time it's announced that I'm going to speak, you're here. Uh, I don't blame you. You're, you're doing right to come, brother. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Some of you all have gotten out of touch yourself with the spirit that you should be in and with the mental, mental disposition that you should be in. You've gotten out of touch with it. You're no longer respecting God as he should be respected. You preachers. You're no longer respecting scripture, revealed scripture, as it should be respected. You're preaching for results in the people. You're preaching to, to make the people happy. You're preaching to make the people give you money. You're preaching to make the people love you. You're too selfish. To get back connected with the true human spirit and human life that God wants for us, we got to stop being selfish. God is chari charitable. And he created us to be charitable. God loves to give. And he created us to love giving. We have to love giving more than we love getting. And when we love giving more than we love getting, God will be with us. We'll come into the right spirit and the people will love us even more. And if the world is intended for you, you'll get it. Or you are not going to get anything that God doesn't want you to have. You can be holy and saintly and the best person in the world. And even God loves you for being so good. But if God knows that a lot of money is going to make your life worse or put you in a position to make somebody else's life worse, maybe God won't want that for you. Maybe you let the Satan or some of the Satan followers have that. That third, how many? Yes, praise be to God. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, praise be to God. <clears throat> yes, so here is the great wisdom of Mr. Farad. He said, I'm going to kill history. I'm going to destroy history. And that's what he did. He destroyed history for my father and for his followers. He told us, don't believe history. Then he attempted to give us the history. And he did the same thing that the world did to the people. He gave us a history that was myth. He said, the black man is God. Now, you know, if you believe you're God, who are you going who, who to go to for questions? <laughs> who are you going to go to for answers to questions? He said, you God. Now, where are you going to go to have somebody answer your questions? The man was wise. Why? Powerful psychology. Powerful psychology. If I can get these dumb, uneducated blacks to believe this myth and they hold on to it, when they ever get themselves together, they're going to be independent. You following me? Yeah. And he said, I come on July the 4th, the Independence Day of the United for the People of America, July the 4th. That is to say, I come for the same thing you all got, you white folks in America. You got your independence, but you got a black people in here that come from Africa, that you brought from Africa, and they are not independent because they are not in their natural minds. They are living under the burden of darkness. Now I'm gonna come and I'm going to awaken them, wake them up mentally and when they find themselves they are going to be standing on their own ground and thinking independently and thinking independently praise be to Allah it worked he killed history he destroyed them the history that we learn in school he destroyed it told us don't believe a word of it 
say the world was not began as they say it began. Now, let me address myth again. The Roman people, they have the story of their beginning as Romans. How do they know their beginning? Who knows their beginning? Nobody knows their beginning. Like we don't know our birth. Our family, our parents have to tell us our birth. Who witnesses his own birth and can remember it? Nobody. So no people know their beginning. They know only what was written, what they learned later. And God knew that, that all of us would want to know, where did we begin? Well, in Africa. Well, how much that can tell us nowadays? That can't tell us very much. And the way we've been scattered, scattered and the different places they got us, uh, from which they got us, uh, we don't know whether to go to Ghana <laughs> or Sudan. One guy said he knew where to go, and he found Kunti Kenti. <laughs> Alex Haley, who wrote the popular book, you know, that very popular book, Alex Haley. Well, when he said Kunti Kenti, I said, yeah. I said, he's beginning in myth, not reality. <laughs> but Kunti Kenti means Kunti you, you were. Kenti, you were. Price, fem masculine and feminine. Feminine. <laughs> 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 That's that supposed to be the, the name of the person he found, you know, or fabricated. Like, uh, you know, you all can believe it if you want it, but I believe his connection with his ancestors was fabricated. Yes. Not, I've got a great book, though. I bought it, and I, and I don't regret that I bought it and read it. <clears throat> a great book and a great story that we saw on movies and TV. A great story. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, so uh, myth, myth uh, uh, is, is the beginning of most people's history. All nations' history began in myth. The Egyptians' history began in myth. The Romans' history began with two wolves, with the wolf, pardon me, wolf. Two boys and a wolf. Two boys were separated from their parents, and they were found by a she-wolf. And the she-wolf nursed, nursed them, the babies. They were babies needing to be nursed, infants. And the she-wolf nursed them, nursed them. And they got healthy and got strong. And one of the brothers was a little bit too silly. One was serious-minded, the other silly-minded. So they came to the city uh, pardon me, to the place where Rome would be established. And one brother was able to cross over and get into that area. The other brother was not. So one left behind. The silly one was left behind. Isn't that a great story for the Roman people to tell them that you all are descended from the smart one, not the dumb one, not the dull one. You all are descended. <laughs> you all are descended the children of the mature one, not the immature one. Is that, that's a nice story for the ego of the Roman people. So if they did it, what's wrong with Mr. Farad doing it for us? So their beginning is in a story, of in fiction, in a lie, not the truth, you know. And as I said, so it is for every other people. Uh, we came from Africa, and Africa was never united. Uh, and, and it's not united yet. Africa was never united. They are identified by tribal, tribal language and tribal ways, folk ways. That's how they identify. The people of Egypt are mostly the same. The Egyptians are mostly the same. But the people of uh, Africa vary so much, so widely. South Africans, North Africans, the Bush people, they vary so widely. And they have so many different languages that they speak. See? And maybe that's the reason why the continent is in such bad shape today. Because they haven't found unity. 
Now, it really hurts me to know that Christianity was there, still there. Christianity and Islam, these two great religions, are both on these continents. But it has not yet stood the Africans up as a people, as a people of the continent. These two great religions have not stood them up and united them as citizens on equal play with each other. Our founding fathers did it for the citizens of this country, but no one has been able to do it yet for the people who live on that continent we call Africa the dark continent. It's still dark. Not with people. It's dark with ignorance. Ignorance of their true calling in this world, in this material world. God willing, there will come a change there soon, I hope. A big change. Even if I have to go over there with a new myth. And preach a story to, work, to get them to have faith in themselves. And a higher evaluation of human life. See, when you get the truth from God, you get the true evaluation of human life. And once you have your true evaluation, you just can't treat yourself like you a dog or an inferior thing. No, you can't do that. You respect yourself. When you get true evaluation of the self, the high self that God made when he made a human being, then you will be careful not to mistreat yourself. Right? That was another thing Mr. Farad said, no self. Know yourself. And he didn't say yourself as a black man. He said in he, asked, he gave us a kind of catechism, like they give the cat back the Catholic Church has. He said, and who, 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 who is my own self? What is my own self? Then he gives the answer, like a catechism. My own self is a righteous Muslim. So he told us to identify ourselves as Muslim. Now, after studying this religion over many years now, since I uh, became aware of what Ms. Farad taught us, because my mother had me memorize those things, not just me, the Muslim sisters, the grown up had, had themselves and their children memorize those things. So you had to commit it to memory, know it by heart, that's what we used to say, by heart, know it by heart. So anyway, since then, I have studied it. And in Islam, in the Quran and in the teachers of Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him, we have two definitions for Muslim. Or if I was writing a dictionary, I would put two entries for Muslim. First entry would be believers in God and believers in Muhammad as the last prophet with the final revelation, the Quran. Uh, that's just short. That's, uh, that'd be a short, uh, the short entry for that num entry number one. What would be the second one? Muslim, the original unspawned nature of every human being. The first Adam, the first un, and unspawned, the original, the first, and the unspawned nature of every human being. And I guess the Christians are saying the same thing when they say Christ in you. Christ, the prophet, or the Messiah, prophet, and Christ in every person. Because Jesus Christ is the one who told them to say that, according to the gospel. Christ said, I in you, and you in me, meaning that we both are having the same essence. Our human essence is one. But my spirit is different from yours. His spirit was from God. But his flesh was the same as our flesh. And he said, I and you and you and me. But I'm sure he was not identifying all of us in our present makeup, in our present mental and spiritual makeup. In our present spiritual and mental makeup, over 90% of us are not true humans. 
we are not true descendants of Adam, meaning that we are in the true human nature that God created. We're not in it. We have been taken out of that original nature that God put us, that God made for us when he made our father, Adam. We have been taken out of it. And we know that the story of Adam is that he was seduced to come out of his nature. So he lost his nature too. To the several words of the Satan when he was whispering into his soul, into Adam's soul. Adam's soul. And he sold Adam on a, a different mind for his life. He sold Adam a different mind for his life. God had created him with a right mind, and then the Satan sold him on a different mind and caused him to fall from the high place that God had put him in when he made him. The fall of man, the fall of mankind. Though we have preachers preaching scripture, most of us are not in our true human form. If we were, we would be doing better with our human life. But Mr. Farrar told us that history began for us every 25,000 years. He said every 25,000 years, the wise among the black men write history to last for another 25,000 years. And he told us that the white man was created or made, by me, made by a black scientist whose name was Yakub. Or uh, Jacob, in English, Jacob, whose name was Jacob, that a black man made the white race by weakening the genes for pigmentation or color in the black man, he was able to eventually make a white, white man. Well, I'd like to tell Mr. Farad that uh, we, we, we gave birth to white people long before that. Like Dabba the third. A black man gives birth to an albino. Albino means white. So you're just talking about pigmentation. Black people have always given birth to white. Uh, black people have always given birth to white beings. They call it albinos. With weak eyes. Sometimes the eyes so weak they be dashing in the head. Eyeball muscle cannot be controlled. Weak, weak. They're weak, and the skin white. Uh, that's no big deal for us, having white baby. But just think, you know, this. here's a black family, and the baby come out white. And nobody, nobody's upset, nobody's upset. Take that little baby in arm and just, no, no big deal. I, I got me one, one that needs some sunlight now. But you let a white, a white family up north in Europe see a black one covered out of there. That, 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 that'll be the end for the whole family. Whole family will be out of their mind and no hospital will be, break, be able to bring them back to town. <laughs> See, nature prepares us. Nature prepares us. And, and whites are not prepared because that doesn't happen in, in white folks. They don't have black babies. They have albinos, but they're white. Though. They just come out whiter than the white folks. <laughs> but we have what is a great contrast, and it, and it doesn't upset us. I guess that's why uh, we come straight from slavery, still held down and mistreated. But if a white woman say, I want you to come and live with me and take care of my children. We get in that house and be a better mother sometime than the white mother, than the real mother. Yet, go in there and be a better mother than the real mother. And if we all come to our true human identity and see that that's the first identity and that's the most important identity, and you know the Bible says, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Now, I can see that happening. Or I can see that have been fulfilled in the world. 
The first identity was us identifying as human. Human. Not as Africans and Asians and Europeans, as human. Not as black and white and red, as human. Not as Americans and Chinese or no, as human. That's the first identity. And the Bible says that the first shall be last. That first had become last. We put our black skin before our human identity. We put our American citizenship before our human identity. We are American. We know that. That's first. We are American. Oh, I'm an African American. I'm a black American. I'm a Polish American. I'm a Jewish American, or whatever. We put these identities, and these identities have separated us from the original identity. I said this at another previous engagement I had this year, and I will say it again here. If you put your color, your ethnicity, or your race, or anything else on you as an identity, and you lose, get out of touch, you lose the awareness that you are human first, those identities are going to fail you. They're going to fail you. They are in, they are, they're going to end up contributing to your deterioration. Get you in serious trouble in time. How can a person be a racist if they are first grounded upon their human ideal? How can they be racist? No way. So that Satan has to make you forget your human identity to make you a racist or to turn you against your brothers and sisters in humanity. It's fine. All right. If we get back in touch with what God gave us, that he gives us when he say you all are the children of Adam, we can make great progress. Your soul will be lifted up. The burden will be taken off your soul. Your mind will awaken to do greater and more beautiful things. Yes, you'll be free. In our religion, false worship is the worst form of oppression. Now, African Americans, when we think of oppression, we think of white supremacy. We think of our circumstances as slaves on the plantation. We think of discrimination, segregation, and all the wrong done to us by white folks when we think of oppression. But that's not the worst oppression. The worst oppression it is for you to have a false authority over your life. Now, in ancient times, in my conclusion, in ancient times, medieval times too, but in many ancient times, images were made of the powers and, and, and authorities that were working and ruling in the life of people. They made images for them of people who love sex, and sex seemed to have been the main driving force in their life, they were given a deity that meant sex, that meant sex, having sex. And they would worship that deity. Yes, they would have celebrations and, 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 and dance and, and, and uh, shout and everything around that sex organ. This is history. This is history, brothers and sisters. <laughs> And uh, you know Africa, the name Africa, it goes back to a mythical deity, a female, Aphrodite. If you say she is an Aphrodite, you mean she's oversexed? She wants it too often and too much? So we have to understand these myths, how these myths have come into our life. Thank you for watching Community Issue Group presentation of Imam W.D. Muhammad. We look forward to seeing you again 
on our next presentation. And remember, peace.